So I always know that when my birthday comes, so does spring, um, my birthday was the 23rd of March, I'm 28 this year, bit of a strange atmosphere to turn 28 in, I mean as it would be to turn any age, um, and a bit of a strange spring to be heading into I don't think is what any of us expected at the beginning of this year, but regardless I kind of wanted to make myself a little bit of a spring TBR to have some books I'm looking forward to reading in the next few months that will like keep me distracted, provide some enjoyment and comfort reads and that also I'll then be able to create content around and talk to you guys about. Now as you can tell I'm in Edinburgh at the moment staying with my mum and will be obviously for the duration of the lockdown, there's no going back to London now um, and that also means that I'm picking from a lot of books that are in this house so I've got some like childhood favourites here thinking I might do some childhood rereads, I've got um, some of my dad's books I'm interested in and I also probably will read a lot on my Kindle in the spring months so that's kind of where this TBR is coming from but without further ado let's take a look at the books. So I mentioned that I had some of my dad's books on here and the first one sounds so strange but I've been intrigued by for quite a few years and that is To Your Scattered Bodies Go by Philip Jose Farmer and this is a science fiction novel, the first in a science fiction series called The Legendary Riverworld Saga and it's about a protagonist that wakes up and it almost sounds like some weird afterlife but I'm not sure it is, I think it's some sort of science fiction other world. Um, naked as the day he was born on the banks of a river surrounded by lots of other um, individuals but all the way from like Neanderthals from prehistoric times to the little girl that inspired Alice in Wonderland so we've got historical figures from all different time periods and they're all waking up in this weird other science fiction world and they've been brought there for some purpose and they don't know what it is. So I don't know if the tone of this is going to be dark or it's going to be humorous or it's going to be both but my dad actually read and enjoyed these books when he was younger himself. I was with him a few years ago when he found this copy in a charity shop and he mentioned that he'd read it when he was a teenager and really enjoyed it so was uh, wanting to reread it and that it, it sparked my interest and I've been meaning to read it myself ever since and it sounds really weird so I'm kind of hoping it's weird in a good way <laughs> if you know what I mean. But from a childhood favourite of my dad's to a childhood favourite of mine I have The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Googe. So this was a book that I used to love as a kid, this is not the edition I had as a kid, I had a beat up paperback copy and I don't know what happened to it so a few a few years back when I was visiting London before I lived there I treated myself to this gorgeous edition from the Folio Society and it's the only Folio Society edition book I've ever bought new but there's a shop in London and this was like a little treat to myself but even since I bought this I've never done a reread although I've always meant to because I remember this book very very fondly but can't really remember the details of the plot like there's a little bits that I remember and little moments here and there and also the feeling it gave me which was one of complete like um, magical wonder and mystery and I would love to return to that story and hopefully relive some of those feelings and also rediscover the plot as I've kind of forgotten it like I mentioned. I am obviously a little bit nervous in case it doesn't live up to my like memories of it but it was one of my favourites as a child and I feel like there must be a reason for that. I trust my childhood self. <laughs> it originally came out in 1946 so it's also a bit of a classic and who wouldn't love reading this beautiful edition. On that topic I actually bought myself this brand new set of the first 10 books in the Famous Five series by Enid Blyton. It was £15 in the works and I could not resist because again the Famous Five were one of my absolute favourite series as a kid. I used to adore their books and I would get them at the library, I had a few copies of my own and would just like read and reread and read them over and over again. Loved them. So I thought when I saw this that it, I couldn't resist picking it up at such a good price and also maybe I could do a whole video around it where I read the whole series. I know Emma's been doing quite a few videos where she reads like um, entire series in 24 hours which is not what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to read a whole series in 24 hours. And similarly Jen did a video about Angus thongs and full frontal snogging so maybe I could do something similar with this but regardless I'd like to at least read a couple of them and kind of return to that childhood nostalgia 
if you don't know these were kind of like mystery novels for kids set in the sort of mid 1900s which is proving to be a theme with my childhood rereads so far. I do then have a couple of books I did bring up with me from London and you won't be surprised to see these because they were two of my most recent purchases and I was so excited about them I couldn't leave them behind. The first one is The Empress of Salt and Fortune which is part of the Tor novella series and this is set in a fantastical version of Imperial China but we follow the new Empress and her life having been married off to the Emperor and maybe some of the secrets that she's brought with her and a friendship she builds up with one of the servant women. On the back it says a once feminist high fantasy and an indictment of monarchy and that's my cup of tea. Feminist fantasy, political commentary, here for all of those things and I've had great success with the Tor novella series in the past. It introduces me to so many interesting sci-fi and fantasy authors. I'm really hoping this is also true of this book. Uh, we then have Rose Daughter by Robin McKinley which I have started. I've not read terribly much of. I think I've read like 20 pages but what I've read so far has definitely intrigued me. Robin McKinley is a beautiful writer. I've read a few of her fantasy books now and I always very much enjoy them. They're incredibly atmospheric, beautifully written, so much detail, interesting worlds but quite slow paced and quiet and that's something I really enjoy. This is also a retelling of Beauty and the Beast which Robin McKinley wrote two of. She wrote another retelling just called Beauty which I've already read and adored so I'm super intrigued to read this which was her later retelling of the fairy tale and compare them both and I think that's one of the uh, things that I'm most intrigued with about this. I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it simply as a retelling of Beauty and the Beast but just comparing an author different takes on the same fairy tale should be very interesting. Then one more book I did bring with me from London because I was just really feeling like it is Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Fowley Doyle. I'm definitely in the mood for some kind of YA fantasy but like a standalone YA fantasy and this one's set in our world as opposed to to a big like high fantasy world and I was really in the mood for that as opposed to like a big epic fantasy series and I've been hearing great things about this author for years but I still haven't read anything by her so it would be nice to finally catch on to the hype and see what it is about her writing that everyone loves so much. This is about two friends, a group of friends, I think it's two friends, yes, Olive and her best friend Rose who cast a spell to return lost things to them but it doesn't go quite as they expected and um, it starts to mess with their lives, perhaps things that they didn't want to rediscover a return which immediately reminds me of that concept of one charmed episode so let me know if you've seen that and know what I mean. I don't know if it's actually in any way similar but that's where my mind goes and I'm just I'm just intrigued by this. I think there might also be queer themes, LGBT representation in here and that's always a plus for me so just looking forward to finally reading something by this author. Then I have some books that were in Edinburgh. The first one is my dad's copy of Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson. I love Jeanette Winterson. She is one of my absolute favourite authors, one of my most read authors and although there have been some works by her that I haven't loved as much, the stuff that's good is just so good and this is one of her more popular ones so I have high expectations. I don't know what it's about, to be fair, not even sure I know what some of Jeanette Winterson's books were about once I've read them because they're so weird. She writes magic realism and it's very surreal and it's about elegant prose and interesting themes and mysterious worlds as much as it is really about plot or character. On the back it says that written on the body is a love story. The narrator, a vulnerable and subversive Lothario, gender undeclared. Generous in scope, sumptuous in detail, Jeanette Winterson has fused mathematical exactness in poetic intensity and made language new. And that does not surprise me, that sounds very Jeanette Winterson, I don't really need to know anything more than that going into it and it will be nice to just sort of return to her writing. We then have a few of my books that have unfortunately gone unloved a little bit and abandoned here in Edinburgh by me whilst I've been reading everything else in London. And the first one is The Bone Dolls Twin by Lynn Flewelling, book one of the Tamir tri triad so I think that means this is a trilogy and this is a high fantasy series and one that's had very very high praise over the years it's a bit of I think like a sort of like you know late 20th century classic and Lynn Flewellen herself gets a lot of praise as a fantasy author but I've never read anything by her so I will be intrigued to finally sort of pick her up and see what all the fuss is about again and this is actually a story about a set of twins a boy and a girl newborns 
who, because of some magical purpose I'm not aware of, perhaps it's a prophecy, are joined together through this spell after their birth, which makes them into one person. And they then have to live their life. I don't know if part of the story is them looking to be separated and find two separate bodies again, or if it's just about living life as two people in one body. And I don't really know what to expect from it, other than, like I said, Lynn Flewellyn's writings had a lot of praise. I think it's going to be very detailed and atmospheric and the kind of fantasy that I really enjoy. We then have a book in the Further Adventures of Sherlock Holmes series. So this is a series published by Titan and um, various books are written by various different authors. So some authors have contributed multiple books to the series, some have only contributed one and I've read a few in the past although none by this author and they are like the title suggests Further's Adventures of Sherlock Holmes so they are authors contributing new stories about Holmes and Watson and some of them can sort of retell original mysteries, some of them can create new mysteries and some can go like really far out there like this one seems to do and even air on the supernatural. So this is Sherlock Holmes' seance for a vampire and in this story Sherlock Holmes goes missing during a seance and Watson has to find Holmes but on the back it says that he must ask for the help of Holmes' vampire cousin Prince Dracula. So I have no idea what's going on there. I think if you are somebody who very much adheres to canon when it comes to series then you have to take these with a pinch of salt as I do. I love Sherlock Holmes and I can still appreciate these for the fun mysteries and adventures that they are. Although I'm so critical of them. If you've seen me review them in the past then you know I'm still going to tell you what I think is in, in keeping with the original Holmes and Watson stories but I'm still able to enjoy enjoy them and that's really important and I, I generally love these books and they take me back to characters I adore and I know the authors writing the books in this series also adore those characters and it's nice sharing that with them so I'm looking forward to picking one of these up. I'm actually really in the mood for something a bit like mystery thriller at the moment which I think is also why I've put the Ren Hun on this TBR. Now this is more of like a paranormal thriller or fantastical thriller perhaps. It's by Mary Watson and it's about this community that hosts this ritual every year where this girl, Wren Silk, is chased through the forest in a warped version of a childhood game. The boys who hunt her are judges, powerful and frightening pursuers who know nothing of her true identity. If they knew she was an augur, their sworn enemy, the game would turn deadly. But Wren is on the hunt too. Sent undercover as an intern to the Harkness Foundation, enemy headquarters, her family's survival survival rests on finding a secret meant to stay hidden. This one says that it's part thriller, part love story, this captivating debut novel will leave readers spellbound. So like I said, I think this one has some fantastical themes but also mimics certain elements of like a thriller novel. So I don't know what to expect but those are things that I'm very happy to see combined in books and I'm generally just looking for a little bit of mystery thriller in my life at the moment. I think for some reason, in, even though they're very dark, thrillers are very escapist. But like I mentioned, I also expect to do a bit of Kindle reading so I'm going to mention a couple of books that I have on my Kindle that I'm really, really looking forward to. So the first one is Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adriana Herrera and this is a contemporary queer romance novel about two women. So I believe the main character is from the Dominican Republic and she comes over to Scotland to compete in a cooking competition or a baking competition but falls in love with another woman while she's there. I don't think it's a terribly long one but it sounds like such joyous fun. We then have The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Harriman and this is the sequel to The Devouring Grey which was a YA paranormal thriller, I guess you could call it. It's got all of those themes. It's kind of dark, it's kind of creepy, it's got you sort of teen romance and drama and it was a lot of good fun. I really very much enjoyed book one so I'm really intrigued to find out what happens in book two. In book one we follow four teenagers who are all descendants of the different founding families in this town and this town has a secret. It is surrounded by this sort of paranormal, magical, evil force that the founding families are responsible for keeping at bay but it's all about this new generation of young people and the potential threat that this devouring grey now poses so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what is next in store for these characters as they did very much enjoy book one. We then have Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore and this one is on the list because it's actually the Feminist Orchestra Book Club pick for, um, let me get this right, May, June. So 
I will link the book club down below but it's a book club that Lauren from Lauren Wade and I run together where we read books that touch on feminist themes and this one's interesting because it is a historical romance which we've never read before in the book club but the protagonist is a suffragette and I thought that was such an interesting combination of things to combine historical politics, women's suffrage, um, to sort of explore what it was like to be a woman in this time period and, and your political rights whilst also being within a genre that is often dismissed as being less significant because of its sort of association with women. So I love a historical romance and a historical romance that maybe touches on political themes and uh, teaches me about history and has a suffragette protagonist is one that I'm so excited about and I really hope I haven't hyped up too much in my head. Then we have one I've mentioned a few times of late and I won't say much about it again here but it is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood which is about lesbian orcs and that's why I say every time I talk about it because those are the only two things that I care about and those are the two things that mean I want to read this book. It's a high fantasy novel about lesbian orcs and I'm super excited about it. Then lastly for this TBR is the third book in the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place series by Mary Rose Wood which is a middle grade series that I have been reading of late on script and very very much enjoying. It is pure joy. There is a combination of like mystery, atmosphere, little bit of like maybe a paranormal edge and loads of humour thrown in there so it's kind of exactly what I need right now and has been for a while but even more so now is a series I'd highly highly recommend. But book three is called The Unseen Guest and in these these stories we follow a 15 year old governess who has her first charge and it turns out that the three children that she's supposed to be teaching and taking care of are not the biological children of their guardians but were actually found in the wood having been raised by wolves and therefore really aren't adapted to to, um, Victorian society which is when these books are set. There's also a bit of a mystery to their background, potentially a paranormal edge, but everything's unravelling quite slowly and I'm really enjoying the pacing of it. So those are the books I would like to prioritise this spring. Lots of books I'm hoping will provide some sort of like fun, comforting, um, enthralling distractions really. So let me know what you plan on reading during the upcoming weeks and months in spring. Have you read any of the books I've mentioned here and what did you think of them and until next time happy reading I'll see you all again soon bye guys